Hey, y'all. In Psalms 105, starting at verse 5, it says, Remember the wondrous works he has done, his wonders and the judgment he has pronounced. You offspring of Abraham, his servant, Jacob's descendants, his chosen ones. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments govern the whole earth. And then as you read through that, you get to the end of that chapter, Psalms 105. And the end of the chapter says, All this happened so that they might keep his statutes and obey his instructions. Hallelujah. Now, we also know that Pastor shared with us Psalms 133. It says, when they operated in unity, there God commanded a blessing. How do I tie these two together for you? The rest of Psalms 105, as you read it, and I want you to, it's a recollection of the wondrous works that God had done for the children of Israel. Some of them didn't seem so wondrous at the time. What do I mean by that? God took jo sent Joseph ahead of them. We know that it was God, but how did he get him there? He got him there through entrapment. He got him there through lying. It wasn't God who lied, but the lies that were told on him. He got him there through jealous acts performed by those who loved him, those who were supposed to love him. But he got him there because that's where God wanted him. Not only did he get him there, but once there, God worked wonderfully. And then Psalms 105 continues to recall all the wonderful ways that God moved on their behalf to bring about their freedom. Oh, and he's telling them, remember this. Remember these wonderful works. Why is he telling them to remember? Because in the remembering, it keeps your mind stayed on Jesus. In the remembering, it tells your story. Your story as a part of his story. How does all that God did for you in your past tie into what your children are seeing today? They don't know it if you don't repeat it. It'll get lost, you'll forget it. So what am I saying to you? I want you to write your Psalm 105. I want you to take the time to recall all the wonderful ways that God worked on your behalf, how he moved in your family to get you to where you were, to position you in the right place at the right time for him to show himself mighty on your behalf. Don't leave out the gory details. Don't leave out the ugliness of your life because God used that ugliness for his glory in your story. This is what you have to remember. This is what you have to share. Share that with your children. Do they know your story? Do your grandchildren know your story? Are they aware of how mommy and daddy struggled? Are they aware of how grandma and grandpa got to where they are? Or do they think it just happened? I mean, you know that that's not the case. But why do I also want you to write down your story? Because we know that after the children of Israel went through all of this and God did all of these marvelous things on their behalf, it was written down, it was told over and over, but somewhere along the way they stopped telling it. And in the stopping, it allowed them to stray. In the, in the lack of recalling, in the lack of recollection, it allowed them to forget how good God was. And they began to think that they got to where they were because of their own good deeds, because of their own good acts. But that's not the case, and we know that. So write your story, tell your Psalm 105, recall it in your mind, and let God be glorified as you do this. God, I thank you for the story of our lives. I thank you for my story. I thank you for the story of my family. And what I want you to do I want you to pull me to the side and tell me your story when we see each other again.